It started in the garden, created out of the dust of the field. The Almighty God put his face on Adam's face and breathed in his nostrils the breath of life. Adam became a living soul. When Adam awoke, he saw his maker, much like receiving CPR. The first face you would see would be the one breathing life into you. The ultimate intimacy had now begun. This was the beginning of face to face. Eve, the mother of all living, enjoyed this same relationship with God. In the morning, the Lord would come down physically on the earth with Adam and Eve. Every day, as is written, what is man that thou shouldest set thine heart upon him, and that thou shouldest visit him every morning? Man did not die when they had contact with God's face. They became alive. But in the 21st century, many don't believe that they can see the face of God and live. This error stems from misunderstanding God's words to Moses. Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And also from what Jesus told Thomas, Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Man has twisted these scriptures, not realizing God's heart and his purpose. They were all of them for centuries deceived. For there was another one, causing blindness in their minds. In the beginning, cast from heaven, and now dwelling in hell and earth, it was Lucifer, known today as Satan, the Fallen One, who entered into the garden through the snake, deceiving Eve to take up the fruit to sin against God. The serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. She took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Adam and Eve's eyes were opened, not for the good, but for the evil. Face to face with God was now lost. Satan seduced them away. God would no longer be able to reveal himself by face anymore, but now it would be by voice. After their sin, God came walking into the garden, like he did every day. Then the most tragic words in the Bible were written, and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden. Man could now only hear his footsteps, and not see his face. Isaiah emphasized this devastation, saying, But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you. The devil is the one deceiving men. To go after religion and things that would make men like God, rather than a relationship with God. This ancient deception is still at work today. Even ministers, seeking their career in ministry, leave behind their relationship with God. This is the first reason why face to face was rejected. Two thousand years later, the Lord made a move to restore face to face. Coming down with Moses, he writes, The Lord will come down in the sight of all the people. There were thunders and lightnings, and a thick cloud upon the mount, and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud, so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. Israel, when they saw the lightnings and thunderings, got afraid. They said to Moses, Speak thou with us, and we will hear, but let not God speak with us. They chose a lesser relationship and contact with God in exchange for a prophet, when he had chosen to speak with them himself. The third time, God sent his Son, Jesus Christ, down onto the earth. God was manifest in the flesh. God sent his Son to remove the veil that sin had created between his face and man's. I am the way, the truth, 
and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Many people just hear, no man can come to the Father. No man can come. But Christ has become the exception. Jesus took away the sin, the veil that was covering the Father's face. But Israel chose to establish religious doctrines from God's word above face to face and rejected the Christ, thus rejecting face to face. Jesus even said to the religious church at the time, Woe unto the scribes and Pharisees, they shall receive the greater damnation. Now, for the fourth time in the 21st century, God's move of face to face is on earth again. A move that only happens every 2,000 years. From Adam to Moses was 2,000 years. From Moses to Christ was another 2,000 years. And now, 2,000 years later, God has released the move of face to face again in the 21st century to restore man back to himself. God, after all these centuries, to reintroduce this ancient glory, he has to first start by choosing a man to work with on the earth, just like he did with Adam, Moses, and by sending Jesus and a nation whom he is in covenant with. God has a covenant with America. The Lord is now on earth to restore face to face with his people. But the question remains, will man make these mistakes again? But there is a generation rising up that is declaring, this is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face. He has raised up his face to face prophet again to lead the move of face to face who was first visited by Jesus at 17 years old. His name is David E. Taylor. I was 17 years old when I was smoking dope, drinking, partying, having sex before marriage, cursing, and I was the leader of a gang. And at the age of 17 years old, Jesus appeared to me in a dream in my sleep. Of course, people think, you know, if Jesus come to them in a dream, then it was just a dream. We know that the Bible says that the Lord appeared to Solomon by night in a dream and said, ask me what you will. That's when he asked for wisdom. And we know God gave him wisdom. He says, I'll also give you riches. And then when he woke up, it says, and behold, it was a dream. But we know that there was an impartation that happened because he became the most richest and wisest man in the world. But well, that's what kind of happened to me. I had a dream where the Lord appeared to me. He was in this most beautiful white robe, this gorgeous white robe. And um, he had such a humble demeanor. He was a humble man. And that's what I really rem remember. Not only what he was wearing, but his eyes, the love in his eyes and the humility that he exuded. He stood there with a smile on his face, eyes full of light and love, you know. And he said, follow me. I knew he wanted me to give my life to him. I knew he wanted me to come out of the world of sin and give my heart to him. I, I felt currents of power and electricity going through me. You know, from that, I mean, from that glory that was coming off of him, his presence. And I was changed. I knew something had happened to me. This unspeakable glory. But you feel the love, the light. You know, it's nothing to be afraid of. This, 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 I, just in frostbite. Not just power, it, it's, it's glory, you know, it's, it's love. My life from that day was changed. All I knew is that something changed in my heart after I saw him and after he spoke to me. I, I had never had an experience like that. So I had an encounter with the Lord. So when I went back to school, I was completely different after the Christmas holiday break. They knew I was changed because I was the leader of the game. They know how evil I was. I was the most evil of them all, okay? And so when I came back not doing what I was doing and telling them Jesus had appeared to me, I saw this man who, that's the only way I could say it at that time because I was so still so worldly, you know, uh, or, or the, the mindset of where I was coming from. It's like this man who our parents talked to us about on Easter and how he rose from the dead and because my parents were Christians, okay, and they are Christians. And so they, I was raised in a Christian home where they took us on Easter. We heard this good old story every year about Jesus rising from the dead or raising from the dead. And so that changed my life when I saw him personally. So, I mean, the way I communicated to them was like, you know, this man 
who our parents have told us about is really alive because I only believed in them because they told me. I never had my own personal experience and when I did, it changed me. So I stood on top of the heaters. I would give up my lunch break just to go on top of the heaters or uh, and preach and minister to the young people and they would get saved. So that was like this excitement. I mean, because I had to tell them I saw Jesus. That's what, that was my message. I said, he's alive. That, that was the only message. I didn't know scriptures and all that. All I knew is that I had seen him and that this was not a hoax, it's not fake, that Jesus Christ has risen from the dead, as he said, and I've seen him in this 21st century. I was 19 years old, I had seen Jesus, and I said, this gotta be real. If Jesus is alive, everything else in the Bible is real. You know, I got to have the real thing. He says, if you want what you're asking for, he says, you must give up everything you own, you must give up your career, you must walk away from everything, and walk by faith on nothing, and I will begin training you for this type of ministry. And the, and the miracle ministry was formed at that point where people were healed out of wheelchairs, things like that, but there was like a process where he taught me about miracles and healing, how he did that, and what I needed to do. Uh, fasting was one of them, a lot of prayer, that I had to live a different life, a consecrated life than normal preachers or normal people in order for him to channel his power to me like that. Throughout the years, David E. Taylor's relationship with the Lord deepened through this personal pursuit of him and the Lord appearing continually to him face to face. This relationship developed into Jesus working with David E. Taylor on a notable scale, even at a young age. Even though his ministry started growing exponentially, he continued to stay focused on his love for the Lord and for people all around the world. With a heart especially for America, he knew that America was founded to be a godly nation, but had now turned from God in many different ways. David E. Taylor desperately and passionately wanted to see America turn back to God. Jesus appeared to him concerning the state of America, telling him the urgency of why America must become a God-fearing nation again. Because if America did not repent of her wickedness quickly, national calamity would arise. And this calamity was shown to David E. Taylor in two dreams given by God while he was in college that forever changed his life. Ten years before the tragic events happened on 9-11, the Lord showed him America's future. Apostle Taylor prophesied for ten years, desperately hoping America would listen. He revealed that Russia was going to attack and bring war to America and that America would not win this war. The Lord showed him that George Bush Jr. would be the president and this war would begin. Our very freedom came under attack in a series of deliberate and deadly terrorist acts. In this dream, it was shown that America would be attacked at the seat of her strength. 9-11 which are her financial centers. The warnings were ignored. Many people tragically died as a result. About 15 minutes ago, bodies started dropping from the top floors. It was, it was absolutely terrible. Obviously, they had two choices, to be burned into, in flames or to uh, leap and end it all. It was shown him that the war began as Russia paid terrorists to come to America to bomb the Twin Towers, thus creating a diversion or decoy to make the American people think that it was only about terrorists bombing America when in actuality Russia was behind the entire scheme. This was fulfilled on 9-11. David E. Taylor was in New York City the day before and the morning of 9-11 warning the people of the coming attack. It's on a date that no American will ever forget. 9-11, September 11. You were in New York City. What did God show you before the event? Well, actually when I was in college, Sid, uh, I had another dream, a visitation from the Lord. And he said, I've come to show you what's going to happen in America. 
and you are to prophesy this and tell this to the officials. And But before the war hit America, I saw the planning and they planned to go under sea to attack America. But before this, the Lord showed me also that President Bush's son would be president when the beginning of this war happened. And the Lord said to me that the war will not start full-fledged. Russia will not just attack with missiles America and send missiles over here. The attack will start with terrorists bombing the financial centers of America. And the Lord said that would be the beginning of the war. And what Americans don't understand, they think it's about bin Laden and terrorists. No, they're getting distracted. The real monster behind this attack is Russia. So I would go all the way to New York, two hours, and drive around the trade center in New York and begin to tell the people that were with me and some of the people in New York that the terrorists are going to bomb this place. I went back up there and drove around the trade center. This was on 9-11, all the way to the morning of 9-11, all the way up early in the morning. And the Lord said, now it's time to get out of here leave. And when I left, when I got back two hours later, it was on the news to my hotel that the tracings had just been bumped. In another dream, the Lord then showed him Russia would attack by submarines that could not be detected by America's military, and that they would release nuclear missiles onto America's soil. This judgment of war would take place because America had rejected God by kicking God out of the nation. Teaching Satanism in school sounds like the stuff of horror movies, but a US court ruling on religious freedoms has enabled devil worshippers in Florida to hand out educational material about their beliefs to kids at state schools. In the Bible, when Israel forsook God, he allowed war to come upon Israel to humble the nation. For thus says the Lord God, the sword of the king of Babylon will come upon you. God does not want war to come to America, but America has not humbled herself of her pride. And because of her pride, America has allowed all manner of wickedness into the land, greed, the worship of money, witchcraft. They will mark the opening of the international headquarters for the Satanic Temple in Salem, Massachusetts. Abortion. The unborn uh, person uh, doesn't have constitutional rights. Homosexuality and lesbianism. In a landmark decision, the U.S. Supreme Court has ruled that states cannot ban same-sex marriages. And all manner of wickedness. This is the main reason David E. Taylor began to seek for the Lord to come and visit America. He sought relentlessly for the answer to turn America back to God and avert the threat of war. He asked God what it would take to see a massive deliverance in the nation. And as he fervently prayed this, he began paying the price for whatever it took for America to come back to God. He tried to use prophecy, raising the dead, and miracles of all kinds to cause America to repent. But none of it worked, as America still did not believe. Finally, the Lord asked him a question, saying, How did I save you? He said, Lord, you appear to me face to face. Jesus said, I want all men to experience me like this. That's the answer. This is the heart of face to face and how it was birthed. Face to face was born out of great desperation in David E. Taylor's heart to bring America back to God and to avert national devastation and war. Out of David E. Taylor's love for the people, he laid down his life to birth the move of face to face. This war can be averted if America repents. God does not want the judgment of war to come to America. America needs a shaking and awakening from the Lord to see where she has gone wrong. Through David E. Taylor's life, face to face, is the winning blow that will win the harvest of men's souls. Face to face is God's sickle for the end time harvest. This is the answer. The Lord visiting your region face to face. This is what's going to change the world. And David E. Taylor tapped into this ancient glory. If Jesus is alive, everything else in the Bible is real. You know, so where is this? And so I went on this quest and I've been on it for years. Where is the real power of God? Where is the real manifestation of God like I experienced? And so it developed into me saying, Lord, 
the type of ministry I want is that which is authentic. And I know that telling people about you is one thing, but them experiencing you like I did is another. So I started praying because I knew that it's one thing for you as a parent to tell your children about the Lord. It's another thing for them to have their own experience. And from that time on, I said, wow, what if Jesus would go to people who are unsaved to get them saved like that? So I started saying, since we're friends, I said, please, through the ministry you've given me, let it be a ministry of uh, reconciliation or representation or a ministry that introduces you to them face to face like that. And that's what happened. It started. It was wonderful. I started to think about how this would affect so many people if Christ came to them person like he did me. And so I started asking for that. Lord, you know, would you work with me like this? I would go to places and Christ would just start appearing to people in their dreams, in their sleep, by the hundreds, by the thousands, and now by the ten thousands. And then after 20 years of doing this type of ministry of the Lord, appearing to people like this, he tells me, he says, I want you to write your testimony in a book now. After 20 years, he says, write in a book your testimony and tell them, chronicle the appearances I've given you personally and tell them how they can have this relationship. And he said these words to me, he says, every person who reads this book, I will appear to them. He says, and this message will go greater. And so I was really fasting and praying in church in the year 2006 when I was in there for about two weeks and Christ walked through the wall in the physical realm. And he looked at me and says, David, I want you to write the book called Face to Face Appearances. And he said, he says, and everyone who reads this book, I will appear to them. He says, but tell the story and also tell them where this is in the word, where I said that I want to come to them. He says, because many don't believe. He says, but I'm, I've sent your life as a record and a testimony that I can appear to a man or woman like this show them in scriptures where I have done this and how I'm bringing this back today. Christ want to be face to face with you. He want a relationship with you. This is not for mysticism. This is a real genuine relationship. And so when they hear this message, like in John 14 and 21, Jesus said, he that loveth, he that loveth me, he that keepeth my commandments, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. And I will love him and I will manifest myself unto him. That word manifest in the Greek in the original context means to appear to. And so it's been in the scriptures all the time, but we've overlooked it. We've, we've missed it. We didn't know it was there. But he promised to manifest himself to us when we show our love to him. And I, all I can say is I believe me showing my love to him has caused that to happen. And so when I, but the very first one had nothing to do with my love. It wasn't that I first loved him, but he first loved me because I was in sin. And so people, I've had them say to me, you know, I don't want Jesus to come to me because I'm afraid that I'm, you know, I'm not all right or whatever. But he's a friend of sinners. He's a savior. You don't have to be all right for him to come to you. And that's what he's like. He's nothing like the church has painted him. He's not this religious, stoic, stuck up person who sits on the throne. He is a person. As a matter of fact, he was a human being at one time. And he loves people. And he loves forgiving. He loves cleaning sin. He loves helping you from where you are, not projecting how holy he is. He loves showing grace and truth to people. And that's the Jesus I met. And so when people start having these experiences, Jesus comes to them in dreams while they're asleep or while they're awake. We have so many testimonies, so many hundreds of people who Jesus has appeared to. And some of them are caught on video, but it's amazing how he's come to them and deepened their intimacy with him. And it has changed my life, actually. I mean, just to meet him in person, you get a chance to match a face to the scriptures and see who he really is in person. It hurt so bad and I couldn't move. Sí. And then when I started praising God, I saw Jesus. Y cuando empecé a adorar al Señor, yo vi a Jesús. After David E. Taylor prayed this prayer, Jesus started appearing to millions face to face through dreams, visions, and in the physical realm all over the world. Here are just a few testimonies out of millions who have experienced face to face visitations from Jesus after reading David E. Taylor's book, 
and coming into contact with the face-to-face -face ministry he has today. And we were in a service one day with you, and you had said ahead of time, which is amazing in itself, that the Lord is going to come to you. And about a week or two later, it, it, it did happen that way. He came, and he came this close, face to face. You cannot have this type of revelation, this type of understanding, to tell me ahead of time that the Lord is going to come to you. Yeah. You can't have that unless there's a relationship, yeah. that face to face relationship. Very apparent that you work with Jesus Christ personally. Uh, it's not a regular ministry, it's not a, just another ministry. Well, there are many great ministries out there, yeah. but this works with Jesus Christ, introducing him to a, a whole nation, to a whole world, to a whole generation. Uh, it's wonderful. It will change this nation just as surely as Jesus changed the face of the, of the world. I was born and raised Muslim, and I read the book face to face. Jesus appeared to us. We felt so much peace. We felt so much love. Jesus saved me. Jesus gave me an extension of my life. We want to thank our precious Apostle David Taylor for opening this to us. And precious Jesus that has touched us, has visited us, and we love him so, so much. Apostle David Taylor has been a real blessing and a real father to me. When face to face came to my church, I saw Jesus, my wife saw Jesus, my daughter saw Jesus. The church members saw Jesus, all right? And I know that all over the city is happening. I love Apostle David Taylor because he brings you not into ministry, but into relationship. And out of the relationship, your ministry will explode. I just want to let you know how amazing this ministry is that I'm part of. in this book, Face-to-Face -face Appearances with Jesus by David E. Taylor, powerful, powerful book, changed my whole life. And when I was taken to heaven, into this beautiful, beautiful garden with all these flowers and just the, the feeling of it just felt peace. There was peace everywhere. And I remember Jesus there. He came and he was wearing all white and he was so soft and so sweet. As I read uh, Face to Face book and as I listened to Pastor David e. Taylor, it helped me broke down and break this paradigm that I had, this religious spirit that I had. And it, it really helped me to walk in more love because I'm getting to know through this man of God and through the visitation that I have from the Lord uh, how to walk in love. When I had the face-to-face -face personal encounter with the Lord, I didn't feel any condemnation at, at all. This face-to-face -face encounter that I had with the Lord Jesus Christ showed me he's a true person with his own personalities and characteristics. It was, it was a life-changing experience. David e. Taylor prophesied to me. He said, the Lord is going to be coming to you very soon. And, and I said, okay, the Lord's going to come. I was very excited. I go and I lay down, and next thing I know, I'm dreaming. And Jesus is coming to me. Then I wake up. I'm like, oh my gosh, I just saw, I saw Jesus. I just saw him. It was such an awesome experience. I was brought up as a Hindu worshiping idols. I was on the internet one day and these books on Amazon was just going by. This huge hand came over my mouse and clicked on this book. I never heard about Apostle Taylor. I didn't know who he was. And so when I looked it up, he began to say about his encounters with Jesus. And I wanted to know, who is this man who can even give me this, who, can, who had this relationship? I bought the book and I was consumed. And as I began reading the book, I had my first encounter with the Lord. It has changed my life. It's literally changed me. You know, I come from actually a Pakistani background. A lot of my culture is all Islamic. A friend of mine told me about Apostle David E. Taylor face to face with Jesus and I was just so hungry to see Jesus and I got the book. The first initial encounter I had with Jesus, you know, through this movement, it was when I read that face to face book, I was taken into this vision and I saw the Lord Jesus. He came to me in this beautiful white robe and he was just smiling with this bright smile. I saw the wavy hair coming down. This is what really has kept me going on with Christ. It's changed my life forever. 
you know, so much deliverance that I needed in my life. This is what's going to change the world, you know, because of the price that Apostle paid. After reading the book, sure enough, I was blessed of God to have my own personal face-to-face. -face. I was so excited that the face-to-face -face experience had come alive in my life. I told the church by pastor that the Lord had appeared to me face-to-face. -face. I immediately called Apostle Taylor the next day to let him know my experience and how real uh, it was for me and thanking him for just sharing that movement and allowing me to be a part of that. One amazing experience that I experienced here through a friend, you know, he just would not stop talking about this face-to-face -face book. And so I told him, you can give me the book. I read it in one day. It was supernatural, like God compelled me to read it. And it was just incredible how that happened. You know, I wanted this relationship and I closed my eyes for two seconds. And when I closed my eyes, I saw the face of Jesus. That was one of the most amazing experience that I've had here. This man, Apostle David E. Taylor, was willing to pay a price for people to see Jesus. I'm telling you, it was such an incredible time. The atmosphere was so beautiful and glorious. His presence was beautiful. I literally felt Jesus touch me. He literally, physically came to me and delivered me that night. And Jesus, he's working with David E. Taylor just as he promised in a covenant with him when he told Apostle David E. Taylor to write the book, Face-to-Face -face Appearances from Jesus. And he did that, and ever since then, he's just continuing to visit people all over this this nation, all over the world, the message of face-to-face -face is going global. All over the world, the nations are beginning to experience Jesus face-to-face. -face. David E. Taylor is establishing bases to reach every person with the gospel. Korea, London, Japan, Hungary, Budapest, Dubai, all over the world. The Face to Face book is now being translated into every language. When the Face to Face book was released in Korea, during the first set of services, they had to turn away 20,000 a night because Jesus was appearing to so many tens of thousands in dreams. David E. Taylor prophesied that the news in America would begin to follow the Lord's visitations. It has begun. A teenager collapses in gym class and says Jesus saved his life. I saw a man that had longish kind of ruffled hair with a kind of thick beard. It didn't take me long to realize that that was Jesus. I went up to him and he put his hand on my shoulder and told me that everything would be all right. Some have accused David E. Taylor falsely, using this scripture. If they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers. Believe it not, for as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. In this verse, Jesus was talking about the rapture and his second coming, that there would be some claiming he has returned. This is not what David E. Taylor is preaching. He believes in the rapture and the second coming of Christ. Rather, this is a biblical manifestation that adheres to the very foundation of the Christian faith, that Christ not only died, but he is alive. And because he is alive, he appears to his people today face to face, just like he did in the Bible. Others have said, Jesus doesn't want us to see him because he told Thomas, blessed is he who has not seen and yet believes. In this statement, Jesus was not discounting the importance of appearances. Otherwise, he would have not appeared to Paul on the road to Damascus after his resurrection. And following this instance with Thomas, John on the Isle of Patmos and to others in the scriptures. This was a personal rebuke to Thomas for his unbelief, who had walked with him face to face for three and a half years, and then had the audacity to challenge him without faith. Most people quote what God told Moses, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. Quoting what God said, but not understanding what he meant. God had to allow his face to be hidden for man's sake. 
for everything that has contact with his glory begins to accelerate and mature. If mankind saw God's face after sin, the death process would accelerate to full completion and mankind would die. Not because there is death in God's face, for God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. It was sin and death in us that prevented the face-to-face -face relationship. Even though this face-to-face -face connection was lost, many prophets in the Old Testament saw different body parts of God and lived. God put his hand over Moses, and Moses saw his back in life-sized form. Daniel saw his garment and his hair. Isaiah saw his train filling his temple. Ezekiel saw him from the loins upward and downward. The whole reason Christ came was to reconcile us back to God. If they saw these parts of God in the Bible, then what was there for Christ to bring us back to? It was his face. This is a major revelation of face to face and proves that before Jesus came, men from Moses until then had seen God. But the only part of God that wasn't seen was his face. Jesus came to reconcile us to the face of God the Father. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself. To reconcile means to bring back something that was lost, the face-to-face -face relationship with that which was lost. But Christ came to restore it. You can see God and live face to face. Because so many are so gone hold on something God told Moses, no man can see me and live. It's, they, they allow that to hinder them from believing in a message like this. When that was spoken to Moses, when sin wasn't dealt with. But in the beginning, when God made man, it was his face that got man, that brought man up to life. Why would God say from Genesis to Revelation, seek ye my face and live? He never says seek my face and die. But what happened is sin, the wages of sin is death. And so when God made Adam, he put his face up to his face and breathed in his nostrils the breath of life. He became a living soul. That's just like giving someone CPR on the beach. And the first person you see is the person above you. Adam enjoyed a face-to-face -face relationship with the Lord before sin entered. And after sin entered, the wages of sin was death. And so no man could see God and live. But since God has sent Jesus, he dealt with the sin problem. And now he's brought reconciliation and restored all things. And that's what I'm teaching this relationship. And Christ said that in the relationship, if you love me, I will come and manifest or I'll come and appear to you. And then he goes down a few more scriptures and says, and if you keep loving me, then the relationship will increase to where I'll introduce you to my father that not only I will love you, but my father will love you and we will come. He didn't say just I this time. He says, we will come and make our abode with him. And so it's in the scriptures all the time. And so it's just that it has to be taught, this love relationship. And so one of the things that is very important to me is that people don't think that this is a mystical message because it's not. It's in the scriptures and you don't learn anything about people until you sit down with them face to face. How would you felt if you only dated someone and you only got a chance to talk with them on the phone? That's, that's not fulfillment. It's when you sit down with them face to face, have contact with them. This has been the problem in the church. This is why there's so many denominations because man read the Bible, emails are flat and they interpret what he means. They think he means or they feel he means or they get their own revelation. You have all this division, but if they really got a chance to know him face to face, they wouldn't act like that. And this was his problem, Jesus, even the Lord God, and he came on earth when he dealt with the Pharisees. They had the law, they had the word, but they were using it wrong because they didn't know the person. When you get a chance to meet the person, you understand what he said. And I believe this is the change. This is the new level of intimacy that God is speaking to me to preach and introduce to this generation. A new level of intimacy with Jesus. He is passionately pursuing an intimate relationship with us. Passionately. He wants this more than we do. I've seen that. He wants this more than we do. And you can have this. It ain't based on any good or evil you've done. 
you know, most people think, well, Christ ain't going to come to me because I'm not praying enough or I'm not, um, I'm, I've sinned or I'm sinning or I got these problems. But they don't know. See, that's what I'm saying. When you know the person, he don't think like that. He comes to you because he loves you unconditionally, not because you've done some good or bad. He came to Paul on the road to Damascus. He was killing Christians, killing them, and he appeared to him anyway. So if the appearances were based on everything we did right, then none of us would be worthy. None of us. So it's based out of his love. It's based out of him wanting to come and share this part of himself with mankind again. And I believe that we're in the day where he's ready to do that. I believe the message that the Lord has given me uh, in this face-to-face, -face, what you would call intimacy, the message is really about intimacy. That's what it's about. The Lord wants to be close to us and want a personal relationship with us and want man to know that they can have this kind of contact with them. Religion makes God a million miles away, you see, but relationship brings God close. The Lord says the word is nigh you, even in your mouth. All the time throughout the Bible, people who are religious factor God away from people. We always make God mystical, like he's so far away that you can't get to him or you can't do this. That's what religion does. Religion kills a living God. It gives you a form. It gives you an image of who he is, but not the real him. What this message is about is introducing to people, introducing people to Jesus personally, where they have a real live conversation with him. But because of my friendship with him, and my prayers for him to reach others, which I give him all the glory. I don't believe it's by my goodness. I've made so many mistakes through the years, even after the Lord saved me. So I don't believe it's by my goodness that this is happening. I believe it's by my access. I believe it's by the relationship that I've had with him that gives people the access to meet him in a face-to-face -face way. And it's his word, but I believe God uses people to help bring things to the earth that he purposes because he has always partnered with man from the beginning with Abraham to get his son in the earth you know he's partnered with men throughout years and that's why I believe this is a partnership cooperation between him and I but to to bless the world and the main message is intimacy it's Christ want to be face to face with you you know no longer do he want to just you to hear his voice and feel his presence which is wonderful he wants something more personal. And I believe this is the level that's coming now to the earth and to the church. He wants an intimate relationship with us beyond anything we've ever seen before or experienced. It's not new to God, it's new to us. It's not new to him, it's new to man. But it's for today. And he wants that intimacy with us face to face. For centuries, a great outpouring that will bring in the end-time harvest has been prophesied by the church, known as the latter rain. Hosea prophesied, Then shall we know, if we follow on to know the Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain, unto the earth. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he receives the early and latter rain. Because the church was only teaching about the Holy Spirit and Jesus, he thought that the latter rain was a move of the Spirit and visitations from Jesus, like had been happening in his ministry. For years, he sought God for understanding about the latter rain. The Lord, in answer to his prayer, granted a young boy a trip to heaven in the year 2000 that revealed the latter rain. A seven-year-old boy was taken to the throne of God in heaven to receive a message from Jesus to give back to David E. Taylor. In heaven, the young boy saw a portal open up he saw the future and what would take place on earth. David asked the boy, When you were at the throne room, did you see the father? The boy said no, he wasn't on his throne. In shock, David asked him, 
Where was the father? The boy responded, That's the message. He was on the earth working with you. The Lord said to the boy, Tell David that I am pleased with what he preaches, because he doesn't preach what people want to hear. He preaches what I want to hear. David was shocked. This was the move of God. In this visitation, the Lord showed him that the latter rain wasn't just the outpouring of the Holy Spirit or visitations from Jesus. It was much greater. It was the Father pouring himself out on the earth to reap the end time harvest of souls. He said that Jesus gave him a message to give to me. Basically, that God the Father was going to come down in the latter rain up on earth in this last hour. And then the scriptures all matched it, that God the Father, and not only Jesus, Jesus is coming, and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, but God himself was going to come down in this last hour in the sight of all men. David didn't realize that Jesus appearing to people face to face was only the first stage. He didn't know the move of face to face was much, much more. He didn't know that face to face involves a greater move. The greatest move of face to face is the Father coming down from heaven onto the earth. This type of move traces back as far as to the Old Testament when the Lord sent Moses to deliver his people and come down openly before all of Israel. This is the move that is on the earth now, in both Moses' day and Jesus' day. God came down in the cloud to work on the earth. The cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle, and the Lord talked with Moses. And the Lord said to Moses, I am come down to deliver them. In the days of Moses, the Lord appeared openly in the eyesight of three million Israelites on Mount Sinai. God told Moses, The third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. There were thunders and lightnings, and a thick cloud upon the mount, and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud. And Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke, because the Lord descended upon it in fire, and the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mount quaked greatly. All of Israel saw God physically when he descended upon Mount Sinai to be with his people. Even today, geologists bear witness that Mount Sinai is still blackened at the top when the Lord descended upon it in fire. God came down in the clouds openly and spoke out of the cloud. And there came a voice out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son. Hear him. Peter was there on the Mount of Transfiguration. He saw God come down in a cloud and heard his voice. For he received from God the Father honor and glory. When there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. In Hebrew, the word Lord in this passage is Jehovah. Then shall we know, if we follow on to know the Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain unto the earth. It is referring to God the Father. This scripture is not referring to the Holy Spirit, because he has already been poured out on the earth nor is it referring to Jesus, although both of them will be involved in the outpouring. The latter rain is the Father pouring himself out on the earth to water the people for the end-time harvest of souls before the second coming of Jesus. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. The husbandman is the Father. He is over the latter rain and end-time harvest, be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he receives the early and latter rain. Initially, David didn't know how this would look, neither was it easy for him to believe. Nothing in the 21st century had prepared his mind that God would do something this phenomenal and incredible with him on the scale like he did with Moses in ancient biblical times. From 2000 to 2006, he would still proclaim the message that the Father was coming down on the earth, although he pondered in his heart, how can something of this magnitude happen? 
When he began to share this with leaders in the church, they rather he would not because of their unbelief, especially them believing that God could use one man like this in the 21st century in every generation. God will raise up prophets, the Navy prophet, watchmen prophets, seers, and dreamers. But he only raises up a face-to-face -face prophet every 2,000 years. As the scriptures say, And there arose not a prophet since in Israel like unto Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. And the Lord spoke to Moses face to face, as a man speaketh unto his friend. No prophet had the office of a face to face prophet in Israel like Moses had, until Christ came on the earth. Moses testified of this, saying, The Lord thy God will raise up unto me a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken. From Adam to Moses was about two thousand years. Jesus came to Israel two thousand years after Moses, and now, two thousand years later, God is ready to visit the earth again. He has risen up David E. Taylor, to be the face-to-face -face prophet in the next move of face-to-face -face that has now come upon the 21st century. David E. Taylor is not claiming that he is Moses or Moses reincarnated, but rather has the spiritual inheritance of the Mosaic lineage. Before these appearances of the Father started happening in the cloud, the Lord spoke to him in a dream, I have now given you what Moses had. David E. Taylor has a ministry that comes in the same spirit or has a similarity and type of Moses' ministry. This is scriptural, as it was with John the Baptist. Jesus said that John had the spiritual inheritance of Elijah. This is Elias, which was for to come. This is evidence that God spiritually imparts special ministries, even from our forefathers, and God will raise up leaders that will come back on the scene years later in the spirit and power of their lineage. Like it says about John, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias. There is notable proof that the ministry of face to face is upon David E. Taylor's life, accompanied with remarkable appearances happening all over the world from the Son of God and the Father God coming down in the clouds as it was in the time of Moses and Jesus. There is no doubt that this lineage resides in him. It was in 2006 when Jesus appeared to him that the message of the Father and his calling to be God's face-to-face -face prophet was affirmed to his heart. I was saying, you know, just think if America, God came down to America like this, or in my generation who are atheists, who don't believe in God, that, if he made a notable appearance in front of people like he did in front of Pharaoh in Moses' day, you know, came on earth and was visible in front of everybody, not no five people saw it and nobody else, I'm talking about visible. I mean, I started to get this energy in me for this. You know, I said, Lord, this will change our country. It really started in 2006 when the Lord Jesus Christ came to me, of course, He's come to me over a thousand times over a 20 year period. I've lost count, and this is not an exaggeration, but there are witnesses who know this, but uh, they've seen my life and they know. But I was shutting in the church. I always do this like prayer visual, like every the beginning of every month, maybe two weeks straight, 14, where I go in the church and shut in and just be away in seclusion to be with the Lord. I didn't know he was gonna come to me this time because I never know when it's gonna happen. You never like notified, it just happens. Mm -hmm. And so or if I go to sleep and have a dream or if I'm awake like I was in the church, while I'm awake, the Lord Jesus Christ walked through the wall and he began talking to me. And he said these words to me. He said, um, David, not only I, but now my father, as I promised you when I took you to heaven, is about to start coming down on earth, working with you notably in front of the whole world for my people and for the church. Like it was in the time of Moses, that's what he said, and also in my time. But he also took me there uh, to give me a message and to show me the end time revival that's coming up on the planet, up on earth, how he's gonna visit mankind again 
in a notable way like in biblical times because it's been many years before. And so he began telling me how that every 400 years he chose to visit a generation. Like Israel was in bondage for 400 years and he came down on earth and appeared to Moses in the burning bush and said, I'm come down to deliver them. Between Malachi and Matthew, before Jesus came from heaven and appeared in front of the world in a fleshly body, it was 400 years between that. He began explaining to me how this is America's 400th year. I went back and researched it. America was established in 1607, the Jamestown colony. Well, 1606 by that time, going to 16, uh, 1606, uh, going to 2006, where he appeared to me in 2007, would have been the 400th year. He says, my father always comes down on earth and make a notable appearance. Even when he sent me, the Bible says God was manifested in the flesh through Jesus. All right, well, he made an appearance to the world through sending Jesus. He made an appearance in Moses' day, he came down on Mount Sinai. He says, it's going to happen again. He says, and they, he says, this is the hour we're living in that is happening. He says, America, this is her 400th year, and she needs deliverance. So he told me, he says, I'm going to come down in the eyesight of all mankind and work with you. I've chosen you as a prophet, a main prophet to this generation, to demonstrate that I am alive and I will work with you notably, but for my people to bless them. I was, I was weeping as he's talking to me, okay, and I didn't know it would happen so soon. This was in 2006, but in front of millions, it's happening through cloud formations where he's coming down. But this is just the beginning. He told me, he says, as this increases, he says, I'm gradually introducing myself to America. He says, but as this increases, I will appear, when I appear, I will speak openly in front of millions and they will know that it's me, not just some type of cloud formation or face. It's bigger than that. The Father is coming to the earth. He's coming down on earth. What happens when the creator of the universe decides to meet with his creation face to face? It happened thousands of years ago. It was a phenomena. An ancient demonstration of God's power. Of an astronomical proportion. God came down on earth with Moses in the eyesight of three million people on Mount Sinai. When the Lord first appeared to Moses in the burning bush, he told him why he was coming down to earth. And the Lord said to Moses, I am come down to deliver them. The Lord wanted to come down on Mount Sinai to visit the people face to face. He said to Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow. For the third day, the Lord will come down in sight of all the people. There were thunders and lightning. The moment God's feet touched the earth, the mount caught on fire. Smoke arose as a furnace. God termed this action of Him coming down face to face. These are some of the scripture in the past that verify that God turned this move face to face. The scripture declares, The Lord talked with you face to face in the mount, that thou, Lord, art seen face to face, and that thy cloud standeth over them. The Bible proves that every few thousand years, the Lord will raise up a prophet who sees the Lord face to face. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. To change the course of history, it's needed more than ever. And now we've come upon that time. Just like God chose to work with Moses face to face, he has chosen a man again in this generation to walk in this ancient relationship face to face. David E. Taylor prophesized the father would make a notable appearance in Canada. Looked like a face appeared. Face. This is incredible. Ukraine, 
the Lord is seen before the whole nation. Jesus is seen walking the streets in Chicago as prophesied by David E. Taylor. Astounding. The hand of God comes down on the earth in Scotland. Phenomenal. And this is incredible, and some are calling this cloud supernatural. The hand of God on the Portuguese island of Madeira. It looked like an outstretched hand. Now, recent in 2019, just weeks ago, the Lord has come down again, confirming David E. Taylor's face-to-face -face message to America in Boise, Idaho. He prophesied that this would start happening all over America, and it just happened again. Look at this footage. Oh, look, honey, it looks like a face. And now the Father has promised to come down again this summer at the Crusade Against Cancer with David E. Taylor. July 31st through August 4th. 20320 Superior Road, Taylor, Michigan, 48180. Registration is free. Call now. 1877 The Glory.